This is quite interesting. It's a speech replay button. Let me elaborate on that. I am a big pink button. It is indeed a big pink button. I first saw these on Julian Eilert's channel. He'd got some from AliExpress and I thought they look quite neat. I shall get one and play with about it and then I thought, well, you know, let's open it up. So you have a button in the back. You have a microphone position. You have a small speaker here, possibly potential for scaling things up, although it does have quite a lot of a hiss in the background of the audio. But, you know, what do you expect? It's quite cheap. But to record... You take it up to your mouth and you press the button when it goes beep, beep, you, uh, or is it one beep? You'll find out when I press the button. Then you can record a message and then it stores it. So I'll do that right now. One moment, please. One beep and then two beeps and you release it and then... It stores that sound sample. And if you take the batteries out of it, I don't know if it's got... Well, we'll find out when we take a look at the circuitry. Is it non-volatile memory? I think it is. One moment, please. It is. It's not super loud, but it's pretty good, quite impressive. Oh, and incidentally, it stores 30 seconds of audio, which is quite surprising. Let's open it. So I'm going to guess that we've got little rubber feet here. Where's a screwdriver? And I'll just gouge them out and we'll just get into this and see what's inside. Is it going to be a blob? Or is it actually going to be some specific chips? I'm going to guess it's going to be a blob, but I could be wrong. And is the storage memory going to be separate? These are very, very sticky rubber feet. Right, let's bring in a small screwdriver and whip the screws out. This is when I could zoom down. I'll zoom down afterwards. Well, I will zoom in full stop when I take a picture of the circuit board as I normally do. I bet it's tiny. The screws are out. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? One screw still in. That's what we got. More than I was expecting. Quite a big chip. Also, kind of big housing for the speaker. Unless it's designed for bigger speakers as well. And it's a fairly decent sized microphone. This is all unexpected. Uh, Rightio, uh, tell you what, I shall um, take a picture of this and we can explore it in greater detail. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. I'll zoom down in this so we can get a closer detail. The power supply comes in and goes straight to the buttons. It also goes to the chip, but there are two positive inputs and two ground or zero volt inputs. I'm guessing one is analog ground and one is digital ground because audio chips tend to do that. And each one of them has its own uh, decoupling capacitor of roughly 10 microfarad-ish. The only other major circuitry here is the speaker output, which is direct from the chip, and the microphone input, which has some circuitry around it, which I shall document. Now, there are two resistors. I did experimentally try nudging the value of those resistors to see if it changed the frequency of pay playback, but the frequency is set inside this chip, so there's no sort of chip tuning opportunities. The microphone is impressive because it is a full-size little dinky 10 millimeter microphone. Quite good, uh, quite a generous size. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic. Anything else on the board that's worth mentioning? Not really. There is something on the schematic that's worth mentioning, and it's that hugely angular line. It was the last line I drew in the schematic, and for some reason it went at an angle. I'll just pretend it's some important audio detail. Here are the two double uh, triple A cells. And uh, there they are going to the positive inputs to the chip and pins 10 and 11 with their capacitors. I tried to measure them in circuit. To be honest, all the capacitors measured at 7 microfarads. I don't know if that was the circuitry that was affecting that or they're just roughly. So I put 10 as being the closest useful value for the filtering capacitors. We've got the speaker connected directly to pins 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 are the inputs pulled to the zero volt rail for the play and record buttons. We have... The microphone with a, a connection to the zero volt rail, and then there will be a bias voltage probably coming from these resistors here with possibly gain control. Not sure. I wondered at first if these were some sort of audio filtering, which they probably could well be, but it does look more like a stable um, 
perhaps a, a, a stable reference supply because with these microphones they kind of act like a variable resistor so you have to provide a bias voltage i'm guessing that's for with a couple of stages of smoothing and filtering and then the it goes back presumably this is the um signal back and pin seven into it oh, i could be wrong there this filtering almost looks as though it's happening in the opposite direction but the microphone definitely needs biased so not sure that that would to, to me be the input and these this would be the basically the bias for the um microphone that's it everything is done by the chip it's uh, completely dedicated the chip number is ab22bp and either at zero or an o u64-42a4 i drew a blank um, but that's what often happens to these. I am getting flashbacks to Bible Teddy, though, as being a, a similar sounding chip number. Possibly the same manufacturer, maybe not. Bible Teddy being a, a singing teddy, which stored massive quantities of sound. Uh, this stores 30 seconds, which is pretty good, and it does appear to be non-volatile storage. So the unit has uh, this big button, and it has these two springs. The two springs are to support the sides of the big pink button or whatever colour button they put in. And there are little indents in the sides, so it always goes in in a particular orientation. Uh, so if you have text printed on it, it'll always stay put. I'm guessing that's for the dedicated sound buttons, like the fart buttons or whatever. But there we go. Uh, it's a very heavily integrated sound sample chip which i guess is probably designed for things like greetings cards as well very interesting quite a neat chip